Hello, this is a whale hater doing packet tracer 7312 for the CCNA course 3. And this is the chapter 7 skills integration challenge. This one's a little challenging because we have yet to do some of these commands. It's going to be a first for us, but I'll hold your hand right through this thing and we'll get her done. Opening up R1. Oh, there's my fingers. Thank you for working. Use a single classful network address to advertise the loopback interfaces. And we're going to use the autonomous system one for the EIGRP. So we'll do that with the router EIGRP one. Now we're in there. Now what does that mean? Use a single classful network address. This was kind of kicking my butt a little bit earlier and until I had to just sit down and think about it. So all of these loopback addresses are 172.31. Anything that starts with a 172, you just know that it's a class B network. Let me show you what I mean. So class B networks have a range. Anything from 128 all the way up to 191, 172 would fall in that range. So that means that the first two octets are locked in. Whatever numbers are there, are there. They need those. Now it ignores the last two. So we're just going to leave those to at zero. Let me show you what I mean there. Network. 172.31. Now that takes care of every one of those loopback interfaces. Okay. Zero, zero. See? Enter. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so we're going to use the wildcard mask to advertise the slash 30 network between 1, 2, and IPv4. So that is this guy right here. Serial triple zero. That's the 172.31.6. Network 172.3160, since that's the network address. 172.3162 is the IP address. Slash 30 network address is a zero. And the wildcard mask is 0003. Now, if you guys want this, if you guys want this sheet, just go ahead and message me at whalehater at gmail.com and I will more than happily help you out. All right. That one should be good. What is next? Use the default passive interface method and only allow EIGRP updates out the active EIGRP serial interfaces. Those would be these guys and a to these guys. So those we don't need to send pa uh, we don't need to send updates out to the internet. The internet don't care. So passive interface default. Now this is going to shut down updates on every single interface. And now you can just go back and turn on the ones you want using the no passive interface and then just reference your exit interface which you want to pull back up. So that one's done. It's kind of like a you know step backwards, step forward type of deal. Okay. Use the default configure a directly attach route. Blah, 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 blah. Configure the serial interface between R1, R2, and IPv4 edge to send hellos every 10 seconds. So I think we're done here. Exit out of here and go to the interface S000. Now we're going to add the IP hello interval EIGRP1 and set it to 10 seconds, okay? I'm gonna copy that for later use, enter. Okay, next. I think that's it for R1. We can just forget about them, R2. Ugh, come on fingers, do your thing. Router. Yeah, we're going to basically just be doing the same commands as we did on R1, except we're going to have a different classful address. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing 10.0.0.0 is over here, as you see, it's a 10 network. All and that's a class A, so it only cares about that first uh, number, that first octet, the last three octets. It don't care about, so we don't have to put anything in there. We don't have to do a 1010 10 or anything like that. Enter. And for classful addresses, we don't even need to use a wildcard mask. But on the 
the other ones we do. Since this one, let's see, R2, 10, 10, 8, and then it's the slash 30, subnet mask, dot 3. Okay, that one's done. Now we have to do the passive interfaces, I believe. Oh, yep, there we go. Passive interfaces defaults. So we're going to shut down all updates out of every interface and then back it up by turning one interface back on. So one, one serial one, enter. Okay, now let's do the configure a serial attached to send hellos. Exit out of here, paste that in. Oh, hold on there, hold on. Whoa, Nelly. There we go, now. Let's go over here. Okay, you, now all we have to do is just, we don't have to worry about the single class for this one since it doesn't have any loopback addresses. Now we're going to use the wildcard mask to advertise, or to, you know, to, to get updates from those other two guys and to advertise networks that it's attached to. Network 10.10.8.0, just going from memory here. Yeah, right? Yeah. Enter. See, we got an adjacency. That's working really good for us. Love it. 172.31.6 network. And we got the next adjacency. It's perfect. Passive interfaces is, is the default. So then we're going to have to turn the other two interfaces back on those two S interfaces. Okay. So one, so zero and one. Okay, do you see these updates that we're getting? Um, they're like the bam, bam, bam. So it's just, it turned that thing off and then turned it back on. So that's all that's happening there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's see. Default passive map. Configure a directly attached default route on IPD for edge and propagate it in the EIGRP e e e updates. All right, here is the commands that are available for the IPv4 version. The redistribute command is what we're interested in right there. So to redistribute any route that's external to EIGRP, we have to do the redistribute. And then for this instance, we're making a default route, which is a static route. So that's that. Exit out. Now we have to create that static route. Remember how to do those? Yes, you do. Of course you do. And then we have to do an exit interface out to the internet, right? Which would be the S010. That guy right there. Okay. Let's see here. Configure the serial interfaces between da 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 and hello. So we have to get configure those two interfaces. The, this one, paste, and this one. We should be good. So we got our 50 points. So I think that's our median. I think we're done on this, this side of the network. Now we can pay attention to our IPv6 network. This is a little different. The EIGRB commands are a bit stranger on this side. Router. Oh, hold on. Now we have to, because this is EIGRP for IPv6, we have to turn on unicast routing. Don't ever forget that. IPv6 unicast routing. So that turns on IPv6 throughout the whole router. So now it can now it can use IPv6 addresses. Now to turn on EIGRP for oh, excuse me. 
router EIGRP. We're going to use the autonomous system one. Okay, autonomous system one. Now here, the very first thing you want to remember is EIGRP for IPv6 is normally shut down. So we have to do the no shutdown command to turn it on so we can use it. Now, the only thing we really care about now is, is just giving it an IPv or uh, giving it a ID. Now that's in a format of an IPv4 address, but it's just an ID. It's not an address. It doesn't, it's just a number to identify it. That's all it is. So EIGRP router ID, and then we're just going to, since this is that uh, IPv6 edge router, we're going to give it that 111. Okay. Now the next thing we do is we go to each individual interface and turn it on for IPv6. Okay, we assign it to the, the autonomous system number one. Okay, so to do that, let's do interface S000. So we have to do it for these three interfaces on, on IPv6 edge. Enter, and IPv6 EI, EIGRP1. Just use that up arrow, make our lives easy. Okay, so those ooh, those three are done. Configure a directly attached default route on IPv6 Edge and propagate it in the EIGRP updates. So let's go back to router EIGRP1. It's the same command here, redistribute static. We're going to make a static address, IPv6 route, and that's just the double colon slash zero. And the exit interface is the same as, or back to the internet as the other one was, right there. Whoops. Not router, route. There we go. All right, that one's done. I think we are done on IPv6 edge. We can move on to three. So what's the first thing we need to do? IPv6 unicast routing, you got it. Now we can do IPv6 router EIGRP autonomous system one, no shutdown. Let's give it an add or a name router ID, and this is router three, so we're just going to give it all threes. Remember, it's just an ID; it's nothing more than that. Now, to do this, this was what kind of kicked my butt earlier too. It's like, whoa, how do I do this? You just treat the loopback interfaces the same way that we did these serial interfaces. It's exact same. Exact same, nothing different. Now we have to figure out which <clears throat> which interfaces they are because over here they gave you, you know, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, all that stuff. Over on this one, they don't. So we have to figure out what it is. So we're just gonna do the do show run and it'll show which interfaces are up. So on this one it's zero through three for uh for that guy, for R3. So interface loop, loop back, zero. Ugh, I'm struggling here. And that one is going to be in the EP6, EIGRP1. Now we're just going to use our up arrows. And that one's darn near done. Okay, so. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do the serial interface. So this serial interface is communicating with IPv6. I forgot to do that one. We got to do that one too. Thank you for reminding me. You guys are probably screaming at me. Hey, what about? You're right. Now we've got the adjacency. Woohoo! Okay, now we can do this one.
IPv6, unicast routing, IPv6, router, EIGRP, one, no shutdown. Make sure you do that. I forget sometimes. Uh, EIGRP. This is R4, or router 4, so we're just going to use the all fours. Enter. Yeah, we're done. Interface. Oh, let's find out what the loopback addresses are. Do show run. So our loopbacks are 8 through 11 on this one. Loop back 8. IPv6, EIGRP1. Now we just have to do that serial invasion, and I think we're done. Right there. And then we'll just use our up arrow again. And we got our last adjacency. You guys did so well. Thank you for bearing with this, you know, 16 some minute video. You guys are awesome, as always. Thank you for watching again. Please subscribe, like, and comment below if you got any questions. If you need any help, you can always reach me at whalehater at gmail.com. All right, this is Whale Hater signing off.